hello dear students and friends and uh, and anybody who is who is interested to watch these videos uh, in this video I'll be talking about Kramer's theorem and and certainly this Kramer's theorem has has a pure link with the previous videos it has a link with with the with the time reversal symmetry and uh, it, it certainly involves that uh, that scale of time reversal symmetry operator is equal to minus one so this Kramer's theorem is a key result in quantum mechanics uh, and, and that arises due to this time reversal symmetry time reversal symmetry and what it does it provides deep insight into the behavior of quantum systems especially uh, in the context of the particles uh, with half integer spins like electrons and uh, protons neutrons um, the group that that's generally called as fermions uh, and systems in which time re reversal symmetry is is conserved now time reversal symmetry as we have talked about it in the pre previous video uh, we have a time reversal operator that is T cap and uh, and this operator uh, in quantum mechanics is an anti unitary operator it is anti unitary operator so uh, what does that mean that means uh, that this operator the, it's, it's an operator that transforms the quantum state of the system in accordance with if I have the time reversal operator acting on a state psi and what I obtain is the complex conjugate of psi minus t. Now for particles with half integers time reversal symmetry behaves in a unique way. This time reversal flips uh, the direction of of both uh, if, if we talk about both uh, uh, m uh, momentum and spin momentum both l linear momentum and 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 spin angular momentum uh, <clears throat> what does that mean that means it reverses the sign of the angular momentum so so suppose I have the spin angular momentum and I use T cap on this s and t inverse what i get is minus s now in addition for systems with uh, with spin half uh, the time reversal operator has the special property and this special property we have already proved uh, in the previous video what's that the square of this time reversal operator is equal to minus one so this property implies that if you apply the time reversal uh, operation twice, uh, uh, the, the wave function gets multiplied by, by a negative number rather than returning to its original state. Now this behavior directly leads to the Kramer's theorem. So, so this behavior has, has a clear, uh, uh, clear lead in, in Kramer's theorem. Now, what Kramer's theorem states, basically, it states that, that in quantum system with time reversal uh, symmetry and half integer spin, every energy level is at least doubly degenerate. So what does that mean? That means that for every quantum state psi with energy e there is another quantum state that is t cap psi with energy e but the states the psi and t psi they are orthogonal to each other they're orthogonal to each other now, mathematically, Kramer's theorem uh, 
is based on these two important arguments. What, what are those arguments? The argument is, the first argument is that uh, we have anti-unitary uh, nature of this T cap. It has an anti-unitary nature. And the second important point is the fact that the square of this time reversal operator is equal to minus 1 for the systems with half uh, integer spin of, for, for fermions. Now, because this T cap whole square is, is minus 1, the time reversal state which is T psi uh, is orthogonal to psi. So what does that mean? That means psi T psi must be equal to zero. They are orthogonal to each other. So this orthogonality uh, leads to the conclusion that this psi and T psi form a degenerate pair they form a degenerate pair, both with the same energy equal to E. Okay, now in the systems, uh, in a system that's invariant under time reversal, we can think of each quantum state as having a time reversal partner. We can think of Another partner, the, the partner uh, associated with the quantum state, when, when, when an act of time reversal is, uh, is attributed. We can think of each quantum state as having the time reversal partner. The degeneracy arises because time reversal symmetry, it forces the system to have peered states. It forces the system to have paired states, especially now if psi is say psi is a quantum state with energy, as I already said, energy E, then T psi, as I already said, uh, in, in the time reversed state also has the energy E. Now these two states cannot be the same this state and this state, they cannot be same because T square is equal to minus 1, which I have already proved in the previous video. And what it means, it, me it means that, the, uh, that applying this time reversal twice, it flips the phase of the state. Thus, the states are orthogonal, but they share the same energy leading to the degeneracy. Now, uh, if we think about this Kramer's uh, theorem in terms of, uh, of magnetic fields, let's take uh, into account magnetic field. Magnetic field. All right. Now, time reversal symmetry, it breaks. It is, it's, it's broken in the presence of external magnetic field. When you apply the, the, the magnetic field to the system, what, is, what happens there is that this time reversal symmetry, which gives birth to the two energy states, it breaks down. So magnetic fields couple. They couple to the spin of the particle via what is called as Zeeman effect. And the degeneracy this degeneracy of the energy levels is lifted and this breaking of time reversal symmetry eliminates Kramer's degeneracy. I'll call it Kramer's degeneracy. So if we think about the same, same thing, in the absence of the magnetic field, Kramer's charm holds. And why it holds? And it holds and energy levels remain doubly degenerate. But when the magnetic field is applied, this degeneracy is, is lifted and the energy levels split 
And this splitting of energy levels is what is called as Zeeman effect. And uh, again, uh, quoting down, uh, if, if, if I try to, to go back uh, to, to the same thing that I was trying to tell, uh, this Kramer's theorem is directly linked to the behavior of the quantum, quantum system. And uh, it's linked to the behavior of quantum system under uh, time reversal symmetry. And forces, this time reversal symmetry forces the energy levels of the particle with half integers spin to be at least doubly degenerate. And talking about the anti-unitary nature of the time reversal, what it does, it ensures uh, that the time reversed state is distinct. It is distinct. It's not same uh, from the original state, but at the same time, they share the same quanta of energy. And how do we break this time reversal symmetry? Uh, 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 so uh, when we apply the external magnetic field uh, to the system, what it does, it lifts this degeneracy and we have splitting of energy levels. Now let's try to write down uh, formally this, um, uh, this, this mathematical derivation of Kramer's theorem. Now let's now formalize this Kramer's theorem in a more mathematical manner. Now if I assume uh, a Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian, H uh, and that is time reversal symmetric. What does that mean? It means uh, it commutes with time reversal operator. So if I take T H and T inverse, it will give me H. Now assuming a state, if I assume a state, say, uh, say psi, now this is an eigenstate of H with energy E, then I can immediately say that H psi is equal to E psi. Now apply the time reversal operator to both sides of the equation. So when I apply it to this, so I'll have T H psi, it will it will be, uh, I can write down H uh, T psi and for the right hand side T E psi is E T psi. So, so when we apply uh, this time reversal operator on both sides of this uh, this uh, this uh, this equation uh, what I have I have H T psi equal to E T psi so what does it show this shows that this T psi is also an eigenstate of H with same energy there's no change in energy E. So this psi and T cap psi, they are degenerate states. They are degenerate states with same energy. However, T cap square is minus one. What it states? It states that this t square is equal to minus 1, the state t psi cannot be same as that of psi. In fact, it must be orthogonal to psi, confirming the degeneracy of, uh, uh, of energy levels. So uh, with this, uh, I, would like to, I would like to end this video and I hope Kramer's theorem is clear to some extent at least and you can extend out more using uh, using a good book like Landau uh, uh, Lifshig uh, uh, and, and other books uh, whichever you feel is feasible for you so with this I would like to say you goodbye